Hello everyone, welcome back. In the previous video, we have seen how to add basic authentication in our application using Spring Security. In today's video, we will see how we can implement role-based authentication in the same application. In case you have missed the previous video, I recommend you to watch it before continuing because we will be using the same application which we have created in the previous video. You can watch the video from link present on top right corner of your screen. So without further delay, let us begin. Let us first understand the requirement. In this application, we have created three different endpoints. We want to control the access of these endpoints. The first endpoint, which is slash public, we want that everyone should be able to access this endpoint with or without authorized user access. The second endpoint is slash admin. We want that only a user with admin level access should be able to access this. So this endpoint need the authentication details and a proper role of the user also. The third endpoint is slash user. We want anyone with admin and user level access should be able to access this particular endpoint. Now, if the requirement is clear, let us begin discussing the solution. If you remember in the previous video, we have defined a set of username and password, but there we have not defined any role of that particular user. Role is something using which we can identify if the user belongs to a group which is authorized to perform some operation or access the resources. So any user who is part of admin role should be able to access slash admin endpoint and any other user should not be able to access this particular resource. So in this property files, we can define a role, but it can be done only for a single user. We cannot add more than one user in the properties file. So using this approach is not fulfilling our requirement. To have multiple users, we need to configure Spring security accordingly. We need to use a custom user detail service instead of relying on properties configuration. So to implement our requirement, let me create a configuration class. First, we need to start with creating a configuration package where we will be creating our configuration class. Now in this package, let us create a security configuration class where we will define our spring security related details. First, we need to annotate this class with at the rate configuration. This will make sure that Spring container will look into this particular class for bean definitions. Also to enable security, we need to add one more annotation, which is at the rate enable web security. This annotation tells Spring to look for security related configuration and apply those configurations. By annotating this configuration class with at the rate enable security, we can create custom security configurations such as defining the access control rules, configuring authentication and authorization, and also setting up some security filters as well. In this configuration class, the first bean that we need to create is of type security filter chain. Using this bean, we will be able to control the access of different endpoints. This bean requires a parameter of type HTTP security. Remember, we are developing this application in Spring Boot version 3 plus. But if you are using older versions, then Spring security configuration will look completely different. If you want me to cover the older approach as well, please let me know in the comment section. Now coming back to the topic, Spring security uses the existing filter chain. Let us not get into the complex topic of filter chain in this video. Just try to understand that when a client sends a request to server endpoint, it will have to go through a number of filters where the request can be validated, verified and even modified as per the requirement before reaching it to the actual endpoint. Spring security uses the same mechanism to insert a security filter chain which will verify the incoming request and process it further. Now we will use an object of HTTP security to define multiple security filter chains. To do that, we will use HTTP security dot authorize HTTP request method. In this method call, we need to provide the different endpoints mapping and who should be able to access those mapping. First one is public. This endpoint we want to keep open for everyone. So using request matchers, we provide endpoint slash rest slash public and use permit all so that all the requests will be allowed for this particular endpoint. The next one is admin. So we want that this admin should only be accessible to the users with admin rights. 
So for this we will use dot has role method to configure the required role which is admin in this case. As we have not used permit all and mentioned the required role, this endpoint will no longer be available without authentication and also with authentication it will need a user with role admin. Similarly the third endpoint is slash user and it is configured to be accessed by the user with role user. We also need to provide what kind of authentication it will perform. So in our case we will be using basic auth. After adding all these filters in the end we are just building this particular object and returning it back. This code throws a checked exception and currently we do not want to handle it here. So let me just add it in the method signature. That is the only configuration we need for security filter chain. In this it will create security filter chains in the same order we have written. For that is first public filter will be created and permit the request access and after that other defined filters will be created. While defining these filters make sure to order it as per your requirement and by considering that if any request matches with any filter it will stop processing the remaining filters in this security filter chain. In this particular authorize HTTP request method I have intentionally missed one component which is dot any request dot authenticated. I want you to try it out in your application with and without this configuration and comment below what is your observation. I hope you have also created the first bean of security filter chain. If not, please pause the video and complete this in your code before moving ahead. Now moving to the next part, we have created the rules for endpoints in the first bean like which endpoint will be accessible by which type of users. Now let us try to create a couple of users with those roles. In this example, we will be creating an in-memory user detail manager. In the real world applications, there will be a proper user detail manager which will provide the actual user details. So let us create the second bean of type user detail service. This service will need few user detail objects. First, let us create admin user. In this, we are not encrypting the password, which is actually not a recommended way. But in our next videos, we will use some encryption to store the password also. So as of now, we will be using default password encoder. After that, we are defining username, password and the list of roles that particular user will have. Now, similar to this, let us create another user detail object with the role user. Now once both the users are created, we need to add both of these users in the object of in memory user detail manager and we need to return the same object. Now before we test our configuration, let me just summarize what all we have done so far. First we have created security configuration class and annotated with at the rate configuration and enable web security. Then we have created a bean of type security filter chain where we have defined what user endpoints will be accessible by users of which roles. For example, public is permitted for all the users, admin should only be accessible by the user having admin role and user endpoint should be accessible by someone having user role. Then to test this functionality, we have created another bean of user detail service where we have created two users one for admin role and one for user role here interestingly i have added admin as well as user role in the admin user that means admin should be able to access both slash admin and slash user endpoints now let us start the application and test our configuration here in the logs also you can see it is mentioned that the use of default password encoder is unsafe and should not be done for production. As I have mentioned in my earlier videos also, proper log analysis can give you insights which no documentation or comments will be able to. So always focus on how to analyze the logs properly. Now to test the configuration, let us open the postman. Now this is an HTTP GET request to public endpoint. Now without providing any authorization and authentication details, let us just try to access it. Here you can see we are able to get the desired response with HTTP 200 OK status. That means one filter which we have defined is working as expected. We had configured this endpoint to be open for all that is public. Now let us go to the second endpoint which is slash admin and try to access it without any authentication details. Here you can see we are getting 401 unauthorized. 
Similarly, we can check it for the user endpoint as well. Now coming back to the admin and let's try to access it with the actual admin details. For that, first you need to go to the authorization tab. From there, select the auth type as basic auth. Before we provide admin details, let us try to access it with the username and password we had earlier configured in the properties file. So here I am expecting that it should not be able to get through and we should get unauthorized error there as well. So I was right, we got 401 unauthorized error because that particular user does not have any role defined to it. So it was not able to clear that filter which we have created for this endpoint. Now let us provide the admin username and password details which we have configured in our security configuration file and then send the request. Admin is like a super user which can access all the configured URLs. So let me try to access public and user endpoints as well because public is open so it should be able to access public and admin is also having role of user so it should also be able to access slash user. Now quickly let us test the user endpoint with the username user. Here also we are getting 200 OK and the desired response. Now this user does not have admin role. So let us try to access slash admin endpoint with this particular user. Here you can see we are getting 403 forbidden. It is different from 401 unauthorized. In 403 user is valid but does not have the authority to access this particular resource. Slash public anyway it can be accessed because public is open for all. So that completes our testing of both the users and an open endpoint as well. And that is how we can control access to a specific endpoint by just configuring some security related filters. That was it for today's video. If the video was helpful don't forget to give us a like. If you are new to the channel, I recommend you to subscribe and press the bell icon so that you won't miss any new video updates. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, happy coding.